loudspeakers, the statement piece of every hi-fi system. Some big, some small, some that tower, and some that sit neatly on a desk. But what makes these machines work, and how do they interact with your system? I'm Josh, and in this video, we're going to find out. To understand speakers, we need to understand what your audio signal is doing by the time it gets to one. Your audio passes through your system as an electrical signal from the cable through wire. This wire becomes a coil around what's called a pole piece. By pumping electricity through the coil, it turns into an electromagnet which is attracted to and repelled by another fixed magnet inside the box. This movement vibrates the cone, thus creating sound waves. But creating sound waves isn't enough. How does a speaker change volume and produce different frequencies? Well, good question. Thanks, Josh. You're welcome, Josh. Think of your speaker like a drum. When you tighten the skin, the vibrations occur more quickly, thus increasing frequency for higher pitched sounds, and conversely, if you loosen the skin, the vibrations slow down, and the frequency and pitch go with it. All well and good for drums, but how does this concept apply to loud? speakers. The bigger cones, commonly referred to as woofers, vibrate at a slower rate, playing your audio's lower pitched frequencies, also known as bass. At the top of the speaker is the smaller diaphragm, commonly referred to as the tweeter. Tweeters move much quicker, therefore creating the higher pitched audio, the treble. Many larger speakers will also include what's called a mid-range that helps to blend the audio. All of these pieces work together in harmony, so you can sit back and enjoy your music. When shopping for speakers, it's easy to get lost in the beauty of the cabinetry, of the finish, and watching the woofer go in and out, but you may have noticed something labeled on the speaker called sensitivity and impedance. In a nutshell, speaker sensitivity refers to how efficiently a loudspeaker converts power into sound. Higher sensitivity ratings means the speaker can produce louder volumes with less power. If you have a low-powered amplifier, you'll most likely want a speaker with high sensitivity. Impedance also measures how the speaker interacts with the amplifier, but it measures how much the speaker resists the flow of electrical current, measured in ohms. Speakers with higher impedance require more electrical power to produce the same volume as speakers with lower impedance. With both of these, you'll want to pay special attention to matching your amps to your speakers to ensure you're not only getting your best sound quality, but also that you're not risking damage to any of your components. The last major difference to consider when looking into loudspeakers is the same you'll find with pretty much any hi-fi audio component, integrated versus separate. In the case of speakers, it'll be referred to as active versus passive speakers. Active speakers simply carry an amplifier within them, at least. Some can have streamers and Bluetooth capability, but typically just the amp, making for a more compact, budget-friendlier, and easier to set up package. That said, the more internal components, the more noise it'll create, and the more power will have to be split amongst the separate components. Passive speakers, on the other hand, are exclusively speakers, so they can't function without an external amplifier. This means you'll need more space and money for the amp, but it also means much less internal noise, much more focused power distribution, so less distortion, and a lot more customizability. Knowing how to choose a loudspeaker can be a steep hill. There's a lot of options and a lot of good ones at that, so there are a few things to keep in mind when shopping. The first is impedance and sensitivity, like we discussed. The second is the room that you're putting them in. Your room will determine what size loudspeaker will suit your needs. If the listening space is an open living room and kitchen, then you'll look for larger tower speakers, but vice versa if it's just a small office space, then you'll want to check out bookshelf speakers. The third point to consider is positioning. Two rules of thumb are to keep the tweeters at ear level and set them up so they form a triangle within your planned listening spot. Once you got those considerations in mind, then it's as simple as finding what you like. From there, you can add on to your speakers with upgrades like stands, carpet spikes, cables, and more. That's the what's what on loudspeakers. Let us know if there are any speakers you want to see a spotlight on. Be sure to check out the Audio Advisor Learning Center for more on everything hi-fi or talk to one of our experts today. I'm Josh, and I'll see you next time.